Over the past 20 years or so, what's really interesting is that companies that were the Fortune 500, really the building blocks of what you know defined a strong economy, more than half of those don't exist in the Fortune 500 today. It's all because of disruptive innovation. As software has sort of democratized our economy, anybody can come up with an idea if they have the skill set, if they have a team, and all of a sudden a problem that perhaps that company has faced for 10 years, these guys can tackle overnight. They have the ability to listen to customers in a much more nimble way because they don't have constraints, they don't have red tape. These guys can just be in a garage, they can be a startup of three people, and they can have an idea that sells for a billion dollars. Think about some of the companies that used to be around, Compaq or Xerox or Kodak. And what's so fascinating is that these companies were major players in shaping technology in the world. They don't exist anymore. Take, for example, Kodak. These guys invented personal photography. I mean, they were the ones who uh, invented different types of film. They invented the first digital camera. What would have happened if they thought of Instagram? What would have happened if they came about the next wave of technology and said, consumers are going to be shooting on their phones digitally and they need a way to share it. We should be a part of that. Think about the taxi cab industry. Who would have thought that the pain point of trying to summon a cab was so great that someone needed to actually build software that helped with that problem? Uber today is one of the fastest growing, most successful companies that exist, but they're solving a really boring problem, which was how do I hail a taxi easier? How do I pay for a taxi easier? So here's the funny thing. Your consumers are already telling you what they want. You just have to listen. Those customers might be telling you why you have a one-star rating in the App Store, why the implementation of your product is poor. The question is, are you listening to them? Imagine if you had a team that was really focused, not really on just social listening, but truly on social insights. You have consumer conversations happening all the time, yet how many of those are translating into innovations for your company? A lot of innovation teams are stuck feeling like they have to have a breakthrough idea. I think that's where this concept of incremental innovation comes from. The idea that you're looking at problems across the organization, you have the ability to test, you have the ability to fail, you have the ability to hone in on these issues on you know, a one-off basis and be able to say, we heard about an issue in finance, we heard about an issue you know, over here in customer service. For example, look at Amazon. You know, Amazon might say, you know, our customer service volume is massive. We have to reduce that time and time again. You know, what could we be doing? When I think about the Amazon app, I can actually summon customer service, have them put me in line, and I can just simply forget about it and they'll call me back when they're ready. So it reduces some of their volume, it reduces some of the friction point of me having to wait online, hearing hold music, and feeling grumpier as I wait to actually talk to them about my problem. That's an incremental win. They've been able to maybe reduce their overhead, they've been able to make a customer happy, they've been able to incentivize me to buy more, all through one tiny pain point. That's the type of incremental innovation that you wanna go for. One of the biggest challenges about innovation departments is that not only are they tasked to find the next major breakthrough, but they also have the fewest resources. So you're left in this sort of idea purgatory where you have 10, 15 ideas that all feel like they could be something that is valid in the marketplace, but you're unable to test. So that's where I think an agency partner can come into play. And that could be through software development, it could be through user experience testing and research, it could be through actual design and development and implementation. We have found with most of the enterprise innovation teams that we've worked with, a sense of relief. Finally, they can start to get their ideas out of their head and into market, and more importantly, they feel strongly that now they can focus on more ideas. You know, imagine a world where, you know, you're able to call upon an agency partner and say, we have three or four different ideas. We want to run in all of those directions at the same time and be able to very quickly identify the programs that are working and the ones that aren't. If you start looking for tiny wins and looking for ways of helping improve the organization, an innovation department can be really successful.